it strikes me that um, the 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 state of corporate boards is in a very fluid uh, is very fluid right now, as is uh, our yeah. nation and our world. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, just as a at a very high level, Trevor, how should a board best be making sure it stays on top of things, whether it's through, and by that I mean, like I've seen much more emphasis being in the last year or so being placed on the board evaluation process, committee evaluations. Um, you know, I think the way boards uh, interact with management has fundamentally changed over the last few years. But how, how should a board be sort of self-assessing where it's at, making sure that it's doing everything it's supposed to be doing, trying to stay in front of issues as much as possible, even though I don't know that, even though we think about risks all the time, I don't know that a pandemic itself was on anyone's mind uh, a year ago, but but just uh, just as a, maybe a way of tying all this together, how, how should, what's the best way for boards to sort of ensure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing? Uh, well, you know, one, one uh, question is in the composition of a, of a board. You know, do you, you go for expertise or experience or both? And, they're, and I think there are very different schools of thought on this. Uh, there are some managements and some boards who prefer to have a group of generalists. It's just like how you would put together a team to tackle any sort of, of task. Um, because the, as we said earlier, this is a, this is a job. And so, uh, you know, do you want people? Do you want a collection of people who are deep domain experts in various things, like a cybersecurity expert, or a global health expert, or a digital marketing expert, or whatever? Or do you want a bunch of uh, generalists? And this this tension in constructing the the team, I think, leads to uh, two dimensions on which to focus: experience and expertise. I, to sum it up, I would say that experience enables people to ask better questions because they have experienced, you know, good situations and bad situations and maybe a variety of industries and contexts and circumstances. And expertise allows people to give better answers and, you know, to be able to answer the question about, about you know, should we be worried about a pandemic? How does this play out? But I think a really well-constructed board has a mix of both. And so you have people who have the ability to give really good answers, but also have the ability to ask really good questions. And ultimately the asking of questions, I think elicits a better result uh, in the interacting with, with management. Because the management by definition are domain experts who are deeply knowledgeable about the business. You're never going to know more about the company than the management knows and it is sort of pointless to to even try but to ask questions that they may not have thought of or that challenge them or that require them to you know go back and do more homework and dig deeper into a situation that that's where the board can really add value yeah no that that makes a lot of sense and it it uh to me the that dynamic of just interacting with management and really having a management that's receptive again another cultural change over the years has been that you know um, CEOs and used to really filter quite a bit what went to a board and 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 there's obviously still some of that because you don't need to get give directors uh, into the minutia of detail but but it's far better than it, what it used to be and 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 directors are are you know they they talk to a lot more members of management than they used to you know it's not all through the CEO so it's it's I think it's all it's a great guidance and move and I think that's the direction things are moving in. Yeah. 